No. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm ready. I'd like to go ahead and welcome you guys to the Tuesday, November 21st, 2023 Warrington Board of Aldermen meeting. If you would, please stand and rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Next we'll have the MPCC certification presentation to the city clerk. Good evening, Mayor Schleter and Board of Aldermen. My name is Megan Eldridge and I am the city clerk for the city of Wildwood. I also serve as chair of the Public Relations Committee for the Missouri City Clerks and Finance Officers Association and its Eastern Division. Also here with me tonight is Carla Ayala, Village Administrator and Village Clerk with the Village of Innsbruck. Elsa Smith Fernandez, City Administrator and City Clerk with the City of Truesdale, Katie Bowman, City Clerk with the City of Wentzville, and Patty Smith, City Clerk with the City of St. Peter's. Our purpose in being here tonight is to recognize your City Clerk, Melody Rue, for having been awarded the designation of Missouri Professional City Clerk Certification. This certification is a combination of education and experience, and Melody is to be commended for her perseverance in achieving this goal and encouraged to continue pursuing her education. The Missouri City Clerks and Finance Officers Association is made up of over 600 city clerks and is dedicated to the education of city clerks and finance officers throughout Missouri. With changing state statutes and rules governing cities, it is vital that someone is current on those changes and regulations. The organization continues to strive to ensure that education provided is relevant to the needs and the position of a city clerk. Additionally, you as the elected officials are to be commended for your continued support of Melody as she has worked towards this certification. It demonstrates that you recognize that the knowledge she receives at the educational sessions is of great benefit to you, to other city staff, and to your citizens. On behalf of the Eastern Division and the Public Relations Committee, along with your friends and peers in the Eastern Division, we wanted to say congratulations and best wishes to Melody as she continues her commitment to lifelong learning in her career as the City of Warrington City Clerk, and we would now like to present Melody with a Certificate of Appreciation. Get the crew behind her. <laughs> she just, she just quit. The only correction I can say, ma'am, though, is we, we do encourage, but we do as we're told. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have the Kickelman Scholarship Presentation. <laughs> Doctor? Sure, come on. Some more samples. You guys want? <laughs> awesome. uh, this is a letter from our president, Dr. Roy Tutsi. <clears throat> uh, Dear Principal Anderson, Warren County, hi. Last year, our company purchased a so small soy sauce brewing facility in Warrenton. Since that time, we have been refurbishing the plant, hiring and training employees. As we settle into our second year of operation, we are working to engage with community leaders. That is why I'm writing to you today. As a leader in our industry, Kinkerman feels a strong responsibility to give back to the communities where we operate. One way that we do this is through college scholarships and local high school. I am pleased to inform you that Kinkerman Foods Foundation will begin offering an annual $3,000 scholarship to, the senior, to a senior at Warrenton High School to support their continuing education after graduation. We are a company that highly values education. 
As a member of Warrington Business Community, we are pleased to be able to provide this financial support to a deserving graduate each year. Scholarship payments from our foundation are typically made in March so that they can be received by schools in advance of your annual scholarship award process for graduating seniors. Please feel free to contact the person responsible for scholarships. Reach out to Dan Miller, our Vice President of Administration, at his email for more details about our scholarship program. Thank you for everything you do to educate the high school students in Warrington, preparing them to be successful adult, adults on whatever path they choose to follow after graduation. Which is kind of special in the same respect that Frank is a graduate I from I Warren am. County R3 School District. So. My daughters will be as well. So <laughs> Really cool. It's awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. welcome. Watch, if you guys want to do a photo okay. chance, please. we met with them earlier and, and very, very much um, wants to be a part of the community and we're, it was a great presentation that you could tell how motivated they are to be a part of our community and we appreciate you guys being there. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. Next item will be consent agenda. We have the regular and executive session minutes from November 7th, 2023. Entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as submitted. So moved. Second. Motion made by Schultz. Second by Alderman Quarter. Roll call vote. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump is absent. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum is absent. Alderman Rowmaker? Yes. Motion passes four to zero with two absent. Next we'll have Public comments, if you'd like to address us with any issues, we ask that you come forward to the mic. We'll give you five minutes to speak. Just state your name. Good evening. Jane Kelly, Warren County Fragile Homeless. <clears throat> I'd like to just follow up tonight. Our uh, homeless county, we're still in the top ten in Missouri, and most of them are in Warrenton. Um, can I, I, most, I wanted to uh, ask, what was the follow-up after the August um, homeless workshop that we had that you conducted? Is there any other news you could report to us or progress or anything? I think we've discussed about trying to get more involved with the happy yeah, I was, issues because we had question was. Them. The question I ask, uh, how was things going as far as you and the other four, uh, I believe it was, groups getting together and trying to become one uh, for, the, for the homeless? Oh, I'm not aware of that. I, I, if you look at the last meeting that you're talking about, I asked you guys to do that and have one spokesman uh, for that. So I was just wondering how, where you're at on that. I think at the end of the meeting, um, Agape talked about resurrecting the Warren County Housing Task Force, and I've not heard any more about that. Okay. Well, but I don't know about the well, other I think three that's groups. Where, I think that's what we need to happen in our community is is for you guys to gather up and become one and try to work uh, for something that, like I said. Uh, multiple times that the city has donated multiple dollars uh, to Agape for this particular uh, situation. Okay, thank you. I do know we did talk to her a little bit more. Okay. Um, I, at least I did, <coughs> I should say. Okay. Um, I do know, I, I'm impressed with, and I hope it comes to fruition, but some of the programs she was talking about resurrecting or working on, um, I think would benefit everybody, including yourself and, and, and the goals you're seeking. Um, I don't know that it'll happen directly from the city of Warrenton, but I do, I was impressed with what they are working on so far. Oh, good. So, well, that's um, excellent. I've not heard if, of that, so that's good. If we need good. to facilitate a meeting just so everybody can get together, I'm sure we could uh, provide this chambers to be able to have that meeting um, if we need to. Just 
just let us know and we'll do it if you if it's easier for it to meet on a common ground oh yeah okay thank okay. you thank you jane anyone else Next will be Board of Alderman comments. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanksgiving. All right. Next will be the mayor's comments. <coughs> I am asking for a mayoral holiday, December 26th. It is a <laughs> traditional holiday I usually get, and sometimes I get questions, sometimes I don't. Um, I just think that there's a lot of other places that do this and checking are looking into it. Um, they do kind of call it the same thing, either mayoral holiday um i think it's well worth it i think our employees deserve it so it's kind of where i stand on it any questions on it none i'll entertain a motion to approve december 26th as the mayoral holiday to enclose city hall so move second motion made by miller second by alderman romaker roll call vote alderman schultz yes alderman quarter yes alderman romaker yes alderman miller yes motion passes four to zero with two absent Next will be hearing from City Administrator Brandy Walters. Good evening. The first thing that I have for you tonight is a code change for overtime. Um, we have discussed this in a previous work session. We are basically changing the code to match the current working schedules because currently we have some folks that work five eight-hour shifts, some that work four ten-hour shifts. So we're changing that to be five, four or five, equaling out to 40 <coughs> hours per week. Um, and the other thing that was added, we went through this with our employment attorney and we also added a catastrophic event, which is something that is major and declared. And if budget, budget restraints um, were an issue and over time needed to be comped, then we would have that ability if we needed it. And that was added in there as well. So this code change is a bill. What would be a catastrophic event? A tornado, a flood? A yeah, a huge disaster. Is it defined that would anywhere? Impact, that what? would impact our city. Okay. You're, just, you're asking for just an open definition of any, anything of magnitude that would affect the city as a whole. Yeah. Okay. And it is kind of spelled out in there. Okay. All right. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill Number 81-23. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Quarter, second by Alderman Schultz. In ordinance amending section 125.110 of chapter 125 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrington, Missouri regarding overtime. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of bill number 81 23. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Rollmaker, second by Alderman Miller. In ordinance amending section 125.110 of chapter 125 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrington, Missouri regarding overtime. We'll call vote. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Romaker? Yes. Alderman Miller? <coughs> yes. Alderman Schultz? <coughs> Bill passes 4 to 0 with two absent. The next thing I have for you tonight is our awards banquet. We have annually. That's going to be on December 1st from 11 to 3.30. I would like to request that we close City Hall during that period just so that all employees can attend that event at the same time. Or just just an approval. Will oh, anybody disapprove? No, no. But I think you got your answer. Um, December fourth, I got a notice today that December fourth there is a meeting for city leaders at four p.m. at the City of Wright City's City Hall, and that's regarding the I-70 expansion project. Just so you guys are aware, I did forward that email, I believe, to. Um, regarding the mayoral holiday on December 26th, that is the last day for file candidate candidates, um, the last filing date for candidate filing. So they, we are going to open City Hall, just the lobby, from 3 to 5. So if anybody was still wants to come in that very last day, they still will have that ability to. I'll be here. Yeah, say, is that required by here? state? Or is it by ordinance? <coughs> The interpretation is that someone has to be here on the last day and the recommendation from the San Luis County Board of Elections in terms of interpretation, which is consistent also with the Secretary of State, is to at least be open for the last two hours of filing. Okay. 
right. If it's if it's an ordinance, we'll modify it in whatever we need to for a year. <laughs> it, I'm sorry, it is based on statute. <laughs> it's what, based on statute. We'll tell them that the city of Warrington needs a statute to change for just one year, 2023. <laughs> long, long. <laughs> All right, thank you. The other thing that I, I'm asking for tonight is we currently are over or under our budget on police wages right now by about $64,000. I'm requesting that we could do a budget adjustment and purchase another vehicle with those extra funds. Um, we would do, it takes about four to six weeks to get that and it's going to cost about $58,000 for that vehicle and the outfitting of it. So we would still fit within that budgeted amount, um, but we would do, need to do a budget adjustment in December. That one I do believe you'll need to approve. Any motion to approve the budget adjustment to purchase another police vehicle fully outfitted? Um, no, no, that was going to be my question: Is would it be fully outfitted with that price? Yeah. But, okay. Is there is any um, is pay contractual? Could that money be applied to increase the pay of the officers instead? The only problem I would see with that is it's not an annual thing. It's a one-time oh. thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is that to re replace a vehicle or add to add the fleet? One? We'd add one to the fleet. So motion is on the floor. If anybody would like to approve, so move. Second. Motion made by the quarter. Second by Alderman Romaker. A vote. Alderman Miller. Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Rowmaker? Yes. Motion passes four to zero with two absent. Thank you. That's all I have for you tonight. Thank you. Next we're here from uh, Director of Operations, John Struckoff. Good evening. <clears throat> First item I have for you tonight is the monthly admin report. <laughs> questions on that? I'd, one thing to note is uh, they need police vehicles because we have a bunch of people in the process, so <laughs> we need to, we need the vehicles for the people we have in the process, which is a good thing. So, having said that, in probably the two years that I've been doing this, how uh, how short are we on policemen currently? After this process is over, we should be flush. I think we have seven right now. Wow. I think two started today. <clears throat> is this part of the fact that uh, they're coming from the academy, or? Uh, some. We've got some straight out of the academy. We've got an officer who previously worked here who's returned, and we've got uh, a couple of veterans, including some who are coming in just to be SROs to fill the school contract. Thank you, Chief. I have no questions on the admin report. I have a couple other things to report on sure. tonight. Um, I just want to give a couple updates on some of the projects going on right now. Um, <clears throat> if you notice on uh, West Boonslick, out near the railroad tr uh, underpass there, uh, they started the water main project. Uh, so they're working right along the road there. If, if, if Avoid the area if possible. If not, just be very careful. They're working right along the road there. So um, they're making pretty good headway on that. Um, next project update is uh, we actually were received a um, grant, a TEEP grant, which is a traffic engineering assistant program grant. Uh, it was for $15,000 for a traffic study on Pickney, Pickney over by the high school. So uh, MoDOT will be paying for $12,000 and we'll only be covering $3,000 of that. So that was a last minute submission for that grant and we were awarded that grant. So that project will be kicking off right after the first of the year. So that's pretty exciting. We had the $3,000 to cover the, the other. I'm sorry? We had the $3,000 yeah, so we're going to budget that for the next. It won't be paid out until the next fiscal year, so we're going to budget for that. So, uh, the last update I have for you tonight is uh, the turf project. Um, we've had some great weather to work up there. Um, they have all the base rock in. Um, they're going to start chipping the top next week and hopefully be laying turf in January. So, as of right now, as long as the weather holds, we're we're ahead of schedule. So, let's hope to keep it that way. Nice. I saw some of the drone footage. Yeah, great on the website. Really good. Yep. Yeah, they've been they've been knocking a lot of 
they moved a lot of dirt and then <laughs> hauled all the rock back in. So it, it's a pretty amazing process. I thought it was kind of neat just to watch it on the video. Yeah, that, was, that was a good, good idea, whoever decided to do it. John, can you kind of update us on, uh, can you kind of update us maybe on the handicap parking area? What's going on with that? So we haven't really looked at it too hard yet. Uh, we have a couple rough ideas, but, um, you know, we're going to, that's going to have to be something we have to look at for a budget for next year. Um, so we have a couple ideas. That's not something we could have rolled in this project because the, the turf projects is kind of specific to the turf. Right. You know, I don't, I don't want to be rolling a bunch of concrete into a turf project and then the turf guys have to subcontract that out and it ends up costing us more in the long run. So, um, <clears throat> I mean, we're looking at it, but we don't have anything set in stone yet. Okay. Luckily, we're in, <clears throat> excuse me. Luckily, we're in the off season, so. Okay. Sure. Yeah, and it's just just as long as we kind of keep that on the front page, uh, I, I sure appreciate it. <coughs> yep. Thanks, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Appreciate it. Next, we have Building Commissioner Mike Cross. Good evening, Mayor and Board. <coughs> we have my monthly report. We're still sitting at about 32 new construction homes. I've got about four sitting on my desk ready to hit the permitting process. A couple highlights. Uh, tractor supply is moving right along. Um, uh, Preliminary projected date is about 10 to 12 days before Christmas to open. SSM's filing right past them. It looks like in January they'll be ready to take over their building. It's quite a project they got going on inside with all the x-ray rooms and computer rooms and everything. It's pretty intense with all the lead line walls and it's pretty wild. Um, we've got Lots of concrete going in up the final phase at Walnut Hollow. I'm glad to see the roads going in there. So it's a matter of time before that starts taking off. Pickney's taking off very well also, so very pleased so far. Any other questions? No. Is there, is there any um, um, interest in the, the, the space that Orson's is vacating? Have you heard anything? I haven't heard a word. I had contacts last year when it first became known that they were leaving um, from some contractors coming in to remodel, but I haven't heard anything in probably nine months. Thank you, Mike. Next, we'll hear from Chief of Police, Larry Ellard. Good evening. The only agenda item I have for you tonight is the monthly report. Don't have any questions about that I'll do my yearly reminder since it's gonna supposedly snow this Sunday <laughs> that when snow is forecast accumulating snow is forecast please don't park on the street we don't enforce parking on the sidewalk or any of that stuff just get your vehicles off the street Makes everybody happy including public works especially public works I'm sorry and you don't get the three in the morning knock at the door right exactly and the tow truck driver also doesn't have to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, the lights going in your bedroom and you're going, what's that? It's yeah, disco. No, you're getting your car towed <laughs> at your expense. <laughs> That's all I've got. Questions? No. Thank you. <coughs> Next, we're from Director of Planning and Development, Tim Burks. Good evening, Mayor and Board. You have a copy of my monthly report. Uh, one of the highlights of what we had in the uh, Mimi's Antiques open up at the 1,000 uh, Walking <coughs> Shops Suite for 27 last month, and about it. If you have any questions, any questions? You got about three bills to go after this. <laughs> All right, go ahead. All right. So the first project is the um, Metals of Walnut Hollow Plat 4B, SUBD 115. Uh, Lewis and Beatty, on behalf of Fremont Property Management LLC, has submitted an application for a final plat for the 24.76 acres of land north of Walnut Hollow Drive, containing 59 single family lots. This will be the second and final phase of the 31.2 acre parcels submitted with the original preliminary plat depicting 80 single family homes. Uh, all lots include lot size and minimum uh, frontage required in meeting or exceeding the R2 single family. Uh, residential district. Um, the final plat, uh, preliminary plat was approved by the city on April 20th, 
2021. Uh, staff has reviewed the proposed final record plat and found the proposal is consistent with Chapter 410, the Subdivision Regulation of Warrington Municipal Code. The final plat will conform uh, with the approved preliminary plat. All guarantees and payments required by the City Code will be submitted before the signing of the final plat. <coughs> The PNZ results uh, that motion passed six to zero with four absence. Uh, Lewis and Beatty, or Bart Carmen from Lewis and Beatty is here to answer any questions if you, if you have any. Uh, do you have any for me? I don't. No. no. All right. What? I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill Number Eighty Two Twenty Three. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Quarter, second by Alderman Schultz of the City of Warrington, Missouri, approving the final plat of the subdivision known as the Meadows at Walnut Hollow, Plat 4B. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading, Bill number 82-23. So move. Second. <coughs> Miller, second by Romaker. In ordinance of the City of Warrington, Missouri, approving the final plat of the subdivision known as the Meadows at Walnut Hollow, Plat 4B. Welcome, Alderman Romaker? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Porter? <coughs> yes. The bill passes. <coughs> Four to zero with two absent. Next project is the Seeger Farm Subdivision SUBD 116. City Warrington has submitted an application for a preliminary and a uh, final record plat for a 5.86 acre parcel of land north side of Willow Road, east of Highway 47. Preliminary plat <coughs> applications to create a new residential lot has been submitted with the final uh, slash record plat. Subject site is zone ag our agricultural reserve. Um, so this is part of the parcel that's the wastewater plants on. Uh, so we're subdividing that with the house and two buildings on it. Uh, staff has reviewed the proposed preliminary and final record plat and found the proposal is consistent with Chapter 410 of the Subdivision Regulation of Warrington Missile Code. Uh, the Project passed P and Z with a motion of six to zero with four absence. Any questions? No. No. Entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill Number eighty two twenty three or eighty three twenty three. My apologies. So moved. Second. Motion made by the quarter. Second by the rulemaker. In ordinance of the City of Warrens, Missouri, approving the preliminary and final <coughs> plat of the subdivision known as Seeger Farm Subdivision. Entertain a motion for the second reading of Bill Number 83-23. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schultz. In ordinance of the City of Warrington, Missouri, approving the preliminary and final plat of the subdivision known as Seeger Farm Subdivision. Roll call. Vote. Alderman Miller. Yes. Alderman Schultz. Yes. Alderman Quarter. Yes. Alderman Romaker. Yes. <coughs> motion passes. Our bill passes four to zero with two absent. Okay, our last project is the College Heights Boundary Line Adjustment, SUBD 117. Re uh, Robert and Becca Miller have submitted an application for a boundary line adjustment for a plat for a 0.3 acre parcel located northeast corner of Highway 47 and Ashland Road. Currently, the property is, property is separated into two lots, Lot 7 and Lot 8. Uh, the boundary line adjustment would modify these two lots into a single lot, 7A. Uh, staff has reviewed the proposed boundary line adjustment plat and found the proposal consistent with Chapter 410 Subdivision Regulation of Warrington Municipal Code. Uh, this project passed P and Z uh, with a vote six to zero with four absence. So they basically have had two lots, lot seven and eight. Uh, I think lot eight was smaller at the southern end because of the right of way. So they're just combining these two lots to make one big one, lot 7A. Anybody have any questions about that? Is that you said that was zoned residential? <coughs> that is zoned RC1. Any other questions? All right, I'm going to retain a motion for the first reading of Bill Number 84-23. So moved. Baker, second by Alderman Schultz. In ordinance of the City of Warrington, Missouri, accepting the boundary adjustment for College Heights, Lot 7A, located at 406 North Highway 47. 
entertain a motion for the second reading of bill number 84-23. I move. Second. Motion made by the Clerk, second by the recorder. Ordinance of the City of Warrenton, Missouri, accepting the boundary adjustment for College Heights, Lot 7A, located at 406 North Highway 47. Roll call vote. Alderman Schultz. Yes. Alderman Quarter. Yes. Alderman Rowmaker. Yes. Alderman Miller. Yes. Four to zero with two absent. All right, all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to close the regular Board of Alderman meeting. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schultz. Second by Alderman Quarter. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. And we are so adjourned. Thank you, Gibb.